roll call. Danielle Tessitapani, Amy Deaveny, Amy Lacey, Jennifer Miller, Emma Bachelor, Stephanie Burris, Betty Kevin, Teresa Baxter, Cindy Tiger,
every time I see something that we have in the city, I'm just so excited. Um, I wrote you and you didn't write me back, you wrote, you wrote me back, but I was excited about the photo wrap and saw the Johnson's Quarter, you know, out of Oh, you just said I loved it. I didn't think it needed a response. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're really cool, well, too. They, they look wonderful. It's very they exciting. Really so, yeah, I like, love the one at uh, Mark keep on, and Keep them on. Third, on with the that on it. Yes, that's what we want now. Where is it? Where's the other one? Martin Third. Martin Third. Martin Third. Okay. Just right over here. We will make sure to send the tour to all of you because it is up right now, so it has all of the locations, the map, and the map. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we'll get that sent along. But they really do look great. And also, yeah, I, I can't wait for you guys to get some kind to my daughter whenever she came along. Oh, yeah, you know, and here's Coral. Hey, Coral. Coral. Hey, yeah, that's, so that's been really great. So so that's that's all right here. Yeah. We'll go look at it. She did freeze her ass off at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> just, here you go. <laughs> you are so good. It's the perfect time. No, you came at the perfect, perfect time. Because we were just. We have a yes, we're going to say thanks. I don't think anyone wants to say yes. I also want to thank Laurel Altman for her service on the commission. Oh, oh, oh. So yours, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. An honor. So yes, we have cake. So at any time, you want to just get up and get yourself a piece of cake. There's good cake too. Vanilla and cream Ooh. cheese frost. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really so good. good. Everybody says we don't have to live. <laughs> it's, it's not just cake. <laughs> okay, <laughs> council comments. Yeah, I'm pulling, I'm pulling out my stuff right now. Okay, well I know the end of the eight. year, the end of the year, school year, I was like going yeah. through um, double and triple booking. So um, yesterday we did have the um, the 28th annual um, police memorial that Longmont City of Longmont has hosted. So it's been 28 years. So that was I was there yesterday afternoon at four o'clock. Um, that was a really it was a really beautiful ceremony. Um, so that. Um, you know, that's happens every every May. So if anyone wants to to come and, and watch next May, we'll we'll have another. Um, so the other thing I wanted to advise you all on is on May 29th. It is a Wednesday. Um, we're having a joint city council and St. Great Valley School District meeting. So if you wanted to attend, that is going to be at the uh, school district. 395 South Pratt Street at the district office in the border. So it gives us a chance to, yes. to look at what the school district's doing, what is city doing, how can we coalesce in um, and, you know, just build a strong community for our youth and kind of share what, what we're doing here. Um, and then we are moving forward with a lot of Vision Zero adjustments and um, so you've seen a lot of work happening around town, and so as they're doing those street repairs, they're looking at the, um, you know, setting up along the um, uh, Vision Zero mindset, multi-modality, pedestrians, cyclists, and cars. So you'll see a lot of changes in the, the upcoming couple of years uh, and further along. Uh, let's see, we are going to, be moving forward a lot with um, front, front range passenger rail. So the governor has really put in money and committed to seeing this through. What we're looking for, in the start it'll be from Denver to Longmont. Eventually they're looking to have it expand from uh, Fort Collins to Pueblo. Oh, wow. With the hope that you know, further down the line, it would be from Cheyenne down to, to Mexico. So getting other states involved. Yes. Is that, are they starting on the Denver side or the Longmont side? They're starting, so it, it's upgrading the current BNSF railroad tracks, and it will start, it'll have to start in Denver and work its way toward, toward Longmont. Um, they have to, in order for the train to be able to hit a certain speed, the tracks have to be upgraded. So it's not building new tracks, it's using current infrastructure and just upgrading it for speed. Are the freight trains moving on these 
Um, I believe so. <laughs> That's the, that is the hope. <laughs> and okay. so we do have the NSF Railroad uh, engaged in the process, so, so they're, they're willing to, to make changes. So we're going to start seeing some shifts in there in the next at least seven years. So, anybody remember Fast Tracks? Yes! <laughs> yes. Yes. yes! And so, are we paying for that? So, <laughs> look, we are. so yes. what uh, we have really pushed, I know the mayor's pushed really hard on this. Is that to leverage that money to cover to do front range passenger rail? So we're currently, you know, I'm putting in my calls. A lot of us on council are, are putting in our calls and, and meeting with state legislators, the governor's office, as well as the NSF Railroad and RTD, and you know, really putting the hammer on that we have to, you know, communities already pay for this. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's get something that. Yeah. So really shifting those dollars to cover something that's more realistic. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, of course. And you say seven years, I guess. No? So seven, seven years to completion. Or seven, seven years to completion. Okay. Yes. I thought it was so <laughs> <laughs> space for our galleries by expanding the galleries all the way to the windows here. This will be our children's gallery, so uh, have natural light in there is a great opportunity for that. Um, and our the galleries is a nice one as well. But that does mean that we would need to relocate this artwork. Working with the architects, um, the space that we've identified would be in the new addition so basically the the museum's entrance moves from here where it is now uh, up over to here so it's a little bit larger vestibule this also means that uh, there's a better airlock so in winter we don't have cold air blasting in the way we do now um, and then this is all connected to the main purpose of the expansion which is our um, new flex galleries, uh, 34 to 4,000 square foot flex gallery that um, uh, we're, we're planning on adding on along with uh, uh, support spaces, bathrooms, and so forth. So we have a hallway that would be um, part of the free area of the museum, so you wouldn't have to pay admission to go down this hallway. And that is where we are proposing to put uh, hidden paths on sea trails. So it would be um, basically to right, directly to the right of the new museum front desk. Uh, so a very visible location. Uh, and uh, would 
would be still adjacent to the museum lobby uh, and a very heavily trafficked part of the museum uh, that anyone coming in could see. Um, the reason we're bringing it to you now, even though we're probably a year or so away from actually starting construction, is that we need to give the architect direction, yes, go ahead and design the enclosure and all of that so that um, we have that planned in so when construction starts and we're, we're ready to go with that relocation. So I um, wanted to bring that to you. Obviously, it is, it is your choice if you feel like this is an appropriate location, uh, but uh, we feel like it's a very prominent place within the is there um, is this pretty well confirmed? Is this is there some up opportunity? Is there any chance that this will move if they if they're going to do something different and they say, oh, we don't want to put it there after all, we want to put it somewhere else? Um, I think once the commission has said you know, this is the location, unless they find some structural issue that causes a problem then we would direct them to move forward with that. Okay. I like that you can see a record come out of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's in a good spot for, for people to see it. Yeah, I like that. And All also, right. I also think that because it's not in direct um, from the entrance from people coming in, you the glass won't reflect too much. You'll be able to actually oh. see it without it obscuring all of its layers. It's not directly, but it still will be well lit. I like it. So it's going to be a, an exhibition box, sort of. Or? Um, at this point, we don't have the details, but it would be uh, similar to what it is now in having a um, you know, air gap between the glass and then a wall behind it, so that the glass shows off well. The black. Okay. Uh, yes. I kind of wish that people would have to exit the gallery through the gift shop. So <laughs> <laughs> serious, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's the way it is at the Denver Art Museum. Mm -hmm. and, well, you know, know and I'm darn if I didn't every time I go through there. There's, you do, <laughs> yes. yes. It's true. There's but a, anyway, there's I think a that, great fancy Netflix called yeah. 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 Shop. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, we, we tried, and the, just dealing with an existing building has its challenges. So it does, yeah, but we, are, we are working with as best we can. Well, we're going to have something wonderful from the gift shop now that everyone will want to go there. Yes. They always want to go to the gift shop. I think so. I want to go there. Is everybody pretty familiar with which piece we're talking about, or would you like to see a picture? Or you could all also, after the meeting, go and walk and go yeah. see it. But it's the big wall of glass with the yeah. forest and everybody. Okay. I'm going to make a motion that the commission approve the this architect's placement of this going forward so that they know that it's OK for them to move ahead with this plan. Um, I need a second. A second. Anyone? <laughs> yeah. Teresa. All in favor? Eleven eyes. Any opposed? No abstentions. Eleven four. No abstentions. No no nays. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. And we're thinking a couple of years before we close. Um, actually, about a year. Are they just are they gonna move it out and store it someplace before they put it in or is this gonna be a direct point A to point B? We have not gotten into those details. I'll definitely work with Angela on okay. we want to move it as little as possible, but obviously we don't want to put it in more So if we need to store it. Right. So luckily we have of course some museum storage on site here that's near our office, but of course we also have the MCC, which is off-site, um, so we have, it's not that we don't have storage, it's just a matter of which will be the best solution to the problem. Yeah. And the if problem, problem is relative. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Art on the Move update, Angela. If you have not gone to see mm -hmm. 
4th Avenue in St. Stephen's. We moved 13 pieces in three days, and even the contractor said, Angela, I think this is a little much. So, <laughs> I don't like them standing around. <laughs> don't, I, uh, you know. Uh, but it, it went really well. It was a little slow to begin with, but then once we got moving, it was it was really good. So, uh, so make sure that you go over and see Fourth Avenue and um, see Stevens and the robot move to Kensington. So this is Gregory Fields' piece. Uh, the butterfly bench is outside of Old Town Marketplace, and luckily the artist did decide to have it facing the shops rather than the street. That was um, a conversation that I said, as a mother, I just don't know yeah. that I would let my kids sit that close to the curb. But he came to, he came to uh, that idea. So we're zooming in on Charlotte's nose, but that's nice and cute. And um, I think one of the best things that happened was while these artists were installing um, a group of preschoolers from the from the school down the way were on their walkabout, and they came and stopped, and they said, you know, goodbye to the robot, and we talked about art, we talked about <laughs> switching it up, and that's when Charlotte's piece was there, and they walked around it, happy face, sad face. So I just want you to know that um, I think that Fourth Avenue has been super impactful for our community. It's highly trafficked, it's highly visible. It's, it's a, it was a really good decision. So uh, this is Jody Bliss's piece in St. Stephen's. There's kind of a butterfly theme going on, of course, because her spine has butterflies in the chakra, but then also um, the other piece, which will be coming up. This is the ice, oh, I the sahedron. <laughs> which is a spinny, spinny thing. Uh, this artist pulled up and had, I don't know, seven pieces in his trailer that he was hauling and he just goes from, from state to state to state and is just delivering all of his artwork everywhere. And he gave me uh, the deck of playing cards that he makes that are trading cards uh, with all of the artworks that he has in different years in different cities. So. Thinking of this as the the die for the Dungeons and Dragons, kind of this gaming idea, that this artist is going beyond sculpture, right? That this artist is taking it to that next place. So um, I will make sure to share those those trading cards with you. But he was a he was an interesting dude. Uh, Kevin Schaefer, he's from up in the mountains. He used to be in Evergreen, and now he's further up. Uh, this is the Tolkien piece. And I have not gone and seen it at night, but there is a solar um, collector at the tippy tippy top. And then, of course, the heart of the um, sculpture lights up in, at night. So all the rings are in there. Um, so you can go check that out. It's, it's way cooler in person it's, than in the pictures. Yes. Like, I promise you guys will be so blown away by it. Yeah. Which just yeah, goes to cool. show sometimes the images just don't do really mm -hmm. justice, right? And then on our final day, uh, uh, Revan and her helper guy and I uh, constructed this very heavy, sharp butterfly in St. Stephen's um, and like right before the rain came in and lightning, um, and it's fantastic. So it's kinetic, it moves in the wind, um, the sun shines through its thorax, so there's some uh, transparent you know, color that's going on and it just looks really fabulous there um, and then because you know ambition is is a good thing to do uh, we struggled for three days trying to figure out how to get um, uptown off of safety and justice plaza so um, structural engineers from safety and justice gave us some pretty severe warnings about um, where we could and could not drive the forklift to 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 get the piece so the, the those cones is the line of doom <laughs> that. so on day three the art handler then brought um this boom contraption that they have uh for extended forklift and we found all bolts um miraculously 
and finally got it picked. But uh, yeah, I I haven't had stress like that in a while. Uh, but you can see, just thread the needle, right? Like it was just the right piece of machinery, just the right height, just the right equipment, and uh, it ended up working out very well. And so now, um, of course, move it to a trailer, and then we have it, of course, in front of um, uh, the firehouse, which actually it it complements the building and the firehouse. And then when you look at the sculpture, finally being able to see it in the round, you can see the little windows and the, the idea of it as um, apartment or residential or something like that. But then in that seriously industrial material, it's pretty fantastic. And uh, Morgan, who is with the art handling company, um, she did all of the welding. Um, just to practice her stick welding. Um, it's, it really is a gift and it's a trade and uh, her welds are fantastic. So I really encourage you to go out there, uh, see the work, and then um, the late temporary labels are out. We are working on massaging the intern's um, interpretation. We have some refining to do on that. And then once that's done, the QR code will be added to the label and then you'll have that to a piece too. So yes, good selection. Really great selection that they yes. have. They look really <laughs> cohesive. So we uh, we moved the robot to Kensington Park. And if you're driving west on third, past the robot, you can see it really clearly. It's really well positioned. And then you hit the uh, rack on Martin and Third and it's just makes the whole drive just yes. uh art fantastic. Yeah, how, how did the fire, stone, uh, the fire station people take it? Because they love that robot there. Yeah, I think that they're completely fine they're with, fine. I think everybody's completely fine with getting a refresh of new art. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do think that there is some folks that are upset that it is gone. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, um, because we had the opportunity to remove it and move it, um, we've got to look at its construction and uh, from, in my very professional opinion, um, it is wonderful as a temporary piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. End stop. Mm -hmm. um, so as we go forward, considering our permanent collection pieces, maintenance and longevity need to be at the top of the line of, sure. in our minds. Um, so. Okay. But it's fantastic for Kensington and for another year we'll be very fun. Yeah. Did anybody in the neighborhood provide feedback that they're happy that it's there? Not yet, no. Well, I live in there and I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it looks great for third. It looks great for walking around it. I think this collection on fourth is our strongest yet. It's very, yeah. it works really well together. Uh, all of them say something interesting. It's really nice, so take a little field trip down 4th Street, it's great. Great. <laughs> Excellent. Here's one of your adult day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next, Colton Meadows Park update. Who wants to update? Oh, Stephanie, just uh, this regarding our meeting the other night? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we all got together and did a selection of artists that we want proposals from. We have three artists that we selected plus an alternate if somebody can't do it. And so we have um, one mosaic artist that does really cool mosaic animals. We have another one that does mostly metal sculptures, some interesting arch, arch uh, sculptures and various things. Um, and then our third artist, um, Let's see, well, we have the, our, our alternative does these really cool propane tank panels. So in the pictures, they show kids climbing on them and stuff like that. Um, and they also do benches. So the Clover Meadows Park is going to have an orchard and it's sort of like a horseshoe. And so we were hoping we could you know, place some cool benches around there. So that might be part of what we end up having. So it went very well. It was a very well run meeting. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. She kept us on task, and um, it was probably our best art selection meeting I've ever been to. Yeah. So I really appreciated the way it was run. I think now you have a winning formula. We should stick with it. Right. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's exciting. So there the was submissions. One, oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Go ahead. 
the submissions for the Clover Meadows, what, there were 94 artists? 94, 94 artists submitted their work for, to consider, and the four person selection panel and the three people from the uh, commission narrowed it down through initial voting to 16 people to compare the 16 people they liked the best. It was, um, we did it on time. <laughs> it was good, it was easy, everybody got a chance to talk and discuss what they liked about pieces and, and uh, what would work well in the park. It was just Angela. Yeah, double thumbs up. Yeah, we nailed it. We really it nailed it. Very good. Well, and, and one the of fact the things, that we narrowed it down from ninety four yeah. to three is amazing mm -hmm. to me. But that really is a testament to the volunteers, Teresa, Stephanie, and Jennifer, who are sitting on that selection panel um, with ninety four applications, and each of the applications could have up to ten images. You can do the math, right? So, um, and then not only were they looking at images, they were also reading the artist's narrative. Um, their, the narrative comprised of how they would approach the project. So it really was a, a laborious act of love to go through the, the previewing to, so we could narrow it down to that short list. So, um, and then of course to the Parks Department who came and participated and let their uh, views as well, it's really great. So June 4th is gonna be artist proposals and presentations here at the museum. Uh, I don't know if the artists will be coming in person or if it will be Zoom, but we will be in person uh, to hear the artist proposals. So put that on your calendar. Keep it That's the, that that was the uh, actual proposals for the artwork for the park from the three finals. What was it? June 4th. June 4th. June 4th. Tuesday, June 4th. Probably about five. If if the artists are gonna be zooming in, it actually goes faster. Um, but it's just not as easy. Of course. Yeah, on shuttle. That'll be in the auditorium. Yes. On the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Show everyone who possibly can because it's really fun and it's quite interesting. This is a good opportunity to see how the sauce is. Really what time is it? Probably about five. I'll clarify. Okay. And I will need a couple of volunteers, especially um, timers will be the big one. And if we do have artists coming, um, I need like our host, hostesses, host and hostesses. So I, I can do that. Okay. So um, once I speak to the artists and clarify both whether or not they will be in person or Zoom, that'll um, get my timeline all figured out. So, yes, well done. Well yes. done. Um, shock art update. Who's talking? Is it you? It me. <laughs> uh, so, shock art is open until, for submissions until May 31st. Um, I have been doing a strong push on social media to get people to submit. Artists, as you all know, pretty pretty bad at the whole submitting on time thing, so we have not gotten any submissions yet, but I highly think that we will have more submissions coming in near the end of the month. Um, I would also like uh, Sage or Pamela to uh, recommend to the commission that we move forward with voting in person this year, because neither of you were here last month, and I just need one of you to uh, so speak, speak to it. Speak to you it. agree that and my delegation has to show. Uh, both Sage and you were not present last meeting, and you were the only ones who were right, meeting right. with us. So I just need one of you to say it. We table the conversation yeah. to the back. Okay. Okay. Can I start? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna make a motion to eliminate all my voting and keep the voting in the community for Sean. I I I agree. Does anybody want to have any discussion about it before we move forward with the vote? Does everybody? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Question about it. Yeah. I personally, very easy to vote online. I really like that. You don't have to drive anywhere to, you know. <coughs> so I will be interested to see what the response will be. I think we'll get a lot of people votes. Probably. People voting. <laughs> the thing about it's not a bad thing. I know that a lot of work we had to do in order to weed out the people who were 
Yeah. Padding blocks to go all the way down Well, so also just to mention, I, the reason I, I want to do two locations for voting this year so that it gives a little bit more diversity in the location and the uh, the visitors that will come in. So I'm hoping that we actually get a better idea of the Longmont community's opinion rather than the outsider communities that we get. Which we will have all the analytics for that, right? Yeah, I think that's what I just put that out there. That yeah, I absolutely. A lot of people who will work with that. It's so easy for you to vote, it is hard for us to keep track of votes in a way that makes it more equal for the artists. Yeah, it's fair. There were a lot of artists who absolutely used online voting to, you know, with their friends and family to, you know, not come and look at the submissions, not consider, you know, the, the body of work that they were doing, but in fact just helping their friends out. And that's really, you know, the antithesis of what we're talking about, right? It's, it's the community's artwork. So I totally hear what you're saying. It was born out of COVID, so. May, hopefully the two locations will be um, successful and we have the added bonus of having them here at the museum during the Lego exhibition mm -hmm. so chances of getting more families and kids and parents to participate uh, that that understanding that piece of it it's going to hit a different demographic so how old do you have to be to vote? I can just be any age Poppers. yep yeah no, I mean do you have any you can vote yeah the um, ballot, can you put a place to mark your kid? Yep, it says, I'm a kid. I'm a kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to uh, restrict our voting to in-person voting, uh, and a second from Pamela, and I'd like to see a vote. How many people agree that we should switch to only in-line, in-person voting? Nay, no, there's nobody left. <laughs> no abstentions. So 11 yes and no abstentions or nays. Next, question. Regarding the summary, do we know what boxes we're going to put? Is there anything to select them? Not yet. Kevin from LPC has a short list um, that doesn't include Southwest Lama. So it just came in. So I do whatever. I was clearly, I meant to send it and have not, but um, yeah, anybody who is interested in going on a field trip and looking at them or even spending time on Google Maps and checking them out, happy. So I usually, I usually drive around and look at all the options, yeah. see which ones are yeah. 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 Because sometimes, frankly, they, last year they gave us one that had to be done that was done like five years ago. Yeah, that I think we've cleared done. that all up though. Yeah, yeah. So there was, it's good to double check. Yeah, who wants to receive the list? Oh, one, two, three, yeah. I was sorry to see that the box on Ninth and Hover is gone. Yeah. There's a new box yeah, there. Somebody crashed it. What? Somebody like crashed it. Oh, the car hit it. Is that what happened? The car hit it. And it was um, seriously in disrepair because the the um, sprinklers were peeling up all the uh, paint okay. on it, so car hit it and there it went. Yeah, okay. Bummer. Be careful that corner because some people that are coming out of that building that's on that corner, the old folks are going to have to too well. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> from anyway. We have yeah. talked about that yeah. for a round too, so it's like you'll notice that there are some people who should not be driving. Yeah. There's a traffic box there, the traffic guy said you might want to be twice about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a place for you. It's a busy moment, so it's like not a good place for people who can't see very well or react very well. So, did that get officially decommissioned then? And if, yeah. Yeah, it was destroyed like it's out of the list now. Yeah, yeah. once they get they go. That was an early one that we did that was painted by the students from Longmont High. No idea who, no idea when, no one to contact. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't even think it was graffiti sealed. Yeah. Um, 
All right, Fox Meadows Park. So Fox Meadows is open for um, applications right now. I have sat with the majority of the selection panel. There are two more selection panel folks that uh, still need to go through the orientation to learn about the shortlisting aspect. So I'm gonna do a Zoom meeting a week from tomorrow and I'll invite all of the uh, selection panelists. If you are interested in sitting in on that um, orientation, you are welcome to. It basically is a reintroduction to how to navigate CAFE um, and those kinds of things. Uh, so Nettie, Pamela, you are the two mm -hmm. folks who are sitting on that, so I'll make sure that you have it. But again, anybody who wants to participate, absolutely you can. Um, and then the call closes on Saturday, June 2nd. Yes, Sunday. Sunday, June 2nd. The commission, or I'm sorry, rather the selection panelists will have nearly a little more than two weeks to go through however many applications there are. Um, to nail it down to that short list and then we need to go through that process on the 17th of June. All of these dates I think are on the bottom here. Um, and then uh, artist presentations for that will be July 27th. Um, how many community members do we have on that committee? Two. Only two? For the selection panel? Yes. Two and then uh, five Resident, residents, That's what I meant. seven total. So um, five, five community members. Correct. That's correct. And um, two commissioners. So a total of seven. Seven works really well. Mm -hmm. I like seven. Nine gets a little much uh, because we also have our parks representation. And, uh, it works. I think that there was enough diverse conversation, but we didn't get two in the lead. So um, yeah, seven works pretty good. And that community is uh, very excited. We will probably have lots of neighbors. So the more um, folks who can come to those meetings, particularly the artist presentation, to talk about what already is in the collection, you know, have to continuously talk about maintenance, you know, materials that we might want to select versus other things we might not want to select, those kinds of things. Uh, your input is really helpful. So, put those dates on your calendar. Those are all Monday meetings. So those are Mondays. Clover Meadows is Tuesdays. Okay. Yep. Maintenance. Who wants to talk about maintenance? Do your maintenance reports, folks. I you have been. I did print out three printed, like, hard copies of maintenance reports beneath your um, agendas. If you need me to bring you more, you just tell me. I will print them. I will bring them to you, whatever you need. Um, it is now getting to be really nice weather, so hopefully you can motivate yourself to get out and look. Um, he sent me an email maybe a couple weeks ago just asking for clarification. Just be as detailed as you possibly can. You, There's not really a way for you to know what it's like ideally supposed to look like, but obviously like if there's graffiti or there's something broken, or something is hanging on about to hit a child, like, yeah, we need to know about that ASAP. Like, those are the really important things, but generally, Covered maintenance us. reports are for us to track the weathering of the artwork as it gets older. So, any any details you can um, give us is great. We were also bringing up G I G I G I GPS, GPS <coughs> points. We are still collecting GPS points for GIS, so if you can fill it out, I would really appreciate it. Uh, we just need all of that information to send to the GIS. I have a question that I asked earlier. If I went around and did all my maintenance reports and I took GPS of everything, do we need to do GPS every year? No. Once we've done it, it's good for like a year. Yes. Yeah. Barring earthquake, flood, something. Or moving the artwork. Yes, or, 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 or the work. Yes, yeah, not artwork. Yes. Uh, so the hope, and it's not in stone, but the hope is that there are some GIS interns, summer interns, that actually are paid internships, um, and they have little lags of time with their internship, and we're on the short list for a task for them to do. 
when they don't have when they're in a little bit of a lull. So the hope, the hope, the hope is that this summer, sometime, one of those GIS interns will contact us and say, "Hey, I want to get those points. I'm going to put them into a GIS layer on the website, and then we'll move forward with a more comprehensive um, our public places map." Has everybody seen the um, the, tr the tree tour on our city website? You want me to show you what I think it might be awesome to look like while we're talking about yeah, maintenance? Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Yeah, and it's 649 because we're just awesome. Um, Laura, can you send me um, Excel document? What are your documents that you took those? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I have a this, yeah, yeah, go okay. about plaques. Um, some of them are the old logos and yes. stuff like that. So, is our intention to have all of them updated, to have all of them have QR codes, to have all of them be the same with the logos and stuff? Yes, and we're going to start with the ones that don't have. Plaques. Mm -hmm. okay. So then get to the point where everything has a plaque and then we'll revisit, right? Okay. I mean those those brass plaques are expensive. I know they are. And so taking them out just for because I don't know. But having everything labeled really important. So yes. I think the, the the goal is to get everything labeled first and then we'll revisit. Okay, so would it be appropriate to put this this I miss this piece has a black, but it's the old logo. You could, yeah, that's sure. definitely. Or it's like scratched, or it's take a picture. Yeah, or take a picture. Yeah, or take a picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I will say the the sculpture in front of the library, um, the one that's the archway, it has like a weird rock with the explanation. Yes. Yeah, and that was like kind of busted, but it's there. So yes. any any yeah. no any notes that you want to take, all very helpful for us. Yeah, I did file a report on that one. Yeah. Last week. So this is a tree tour that was done in-house. It's through the GIS layer. And um, so it has, of course, in English and Spanish, which is fantastic. It has a bit of history about the land. It has some of these lovely images. And then it starts going through all of these, what do they call them? The master trees. They're not masters, <laughs> though. They're like champions. 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 Are they champions? Champion trees. Uh, anyway, but this is the pretty fantastic part, right? Is that then the GIS layer, like you can see the bald cypress and it tells you about the deciduous conifers. And there they are all around town to talk about the sweet gum common name resident. But um, it's it's pretty fantastic. And again, it's just a layer on our GIS. So the city already has a GIS. Uh, department. So, my, I think the goal is so why can can't we have just this? Email them and say, hey, how come my park has no trees in the tree net? I don't know how they decided which trees were chosen, but I do think that they're champions, right? That if they're, they're champions, it has, it, has trees in the it has to be age, height, shape. Shape has to be really good. Yeah. No disease, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, but I'm sure that the foresters would be, the arborists, city foresters, would be happy to hear from you. I would love yeah. that. Oh, you know, that's a, so I just Googled um, the Longmont tree tour, okay. but the other way to come at it is, is forestry. Is, if you go actually to the museum's website, if that's where, well, I guess you can't just say the museum. <laughs> Read my mind, which museum is. Uh, if you go to the Longmont Museum's website and you find uh, our tours, which are here somewhere maybe, um, here you go, this virtual historic Longmont tours, um, I'm pretty sure it's yeah. there too. Yeah. So two ways to go about it. Yep. I'm so happy my third graders do this tomorrow. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. 
It's really you know, interesting. It's great 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 you have in Spanish too. <laughs> yeah, and I think, and then it's got these great pictures, and you know, it's yeah. so when this is art, it'll be even better. <laughs> I love trees, but jeez. Okay, cool. Thanks for letting me share that. Uh, okay, so a reminder for everybody to get out and do your yes. maintenance reports. It's fun now. It's it is fun. Yeah, yeah, it's nice fun. And it actually is fun to do it because I find looking at the pieces, when I'm looking from a maintenance point of view, it's completely different than when I'm looking from an art appreciation point of view. Yeah. yeah. And it, you know, anyway, it's just good for our community, good for us. Yeah. Okay, new business. No, we just got a lot of stuff going on, y'all. <laughs> Anybody? Nope. Great. Commissioner Commons. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Stephanie. Let us eat cake. <laughs> and I need a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Awesome. All in favor? All in favor. No days, no abstentions. Fastest meeting ever. Ever. I know. Faster than the last.